Hi guys! It's been a while since I've started one of my videos here aboard Obelix. In a few minutes we'll head over to Athena, the 38-foot sailboat I'm busy fixing up right now. But uh, before we do that, there's something awesome here aboard Obelix I want to show you. But that will require me to remove a little bit of the boat. And there we have my lovely Volvo Penta MD6A from 1974. Although, in and of itself, the engine is pretty awesome, because who would ever want more than two cylinders and ten horsepower? But uh, that's not what I wanted to show you. For that, we'll have to go out into the cockpit. Because the thing that makes the engine awesome is out here, and that's the control panel, or to be more exact, the key in the control panel. I'm about to turn the key, and you guys should see the engine spring to life immediately. <laughs> How freaking awesome is that? I now have a working engine aboard Obelix again. If you're new to my channel, perhaps I should explain the reason that I'm so excited about this is because the engine has been out of the boat for almost two years. So yay! Now we can go sailing again! So far I've only been out for a short little test sail, but there's no water leaking, there's no oil leaking, there's no smoke from the exhaust as you can see. So far I am very pleased. There are a few things I'll have to attend to before I can really start sailing again. For one, I'll have to pull the boat and clean the hull and the prop. The prop is covered in barnacles and that's not really great. But at least now I can go sailing again. Yay! I'm about to head over to Athena, but before I do that, I wanted to show you guys the cutest comment I have ever received. It's from Tim's daughter, and Tim doesn't mention her name, and I've also blocked out Tim's last name just to avoid any kind of issues. But uh, that has to be the cutest comment ever, right? Because of that comment, here is Jökul. He's doing quite fine. I take him for long walks every day, and we play and train every day. So even though you don't see him in the videos, he's doing just fine. In fact, we've only just gotten back from a very long walk this morning, and as you can probably see, he's quite tired. So I'm gonna leave him here aboard Obelix to take one of his all-day naps while I head over to Athena. I doubt very much that the yard will have had time to move Athena into the shed I've mentioned in my last couple of videos. I also doubt they'll have time to move her today if they haven't already. But hey, who knows, we might get lucky today or tomorrow. Yeah, as you can see, she's still outside, but that's okay, I figured as much. But the weather forecast doesn't call for rain for the next week, so I think it's safe for me to start removing some of the deck hardware. If you're new to my channel, the reason I want to move Athena into a shed is so that I can remove the old teak deck, put down some new anti-skip, and also dry out the hull fully, so that I can hopefully launch her back in the water this coming fall. Dang nabbit! You guys don't see me swearing too often, but I think this occasion calls for an old fiddlesticks. Because I've just been told by the owner of the shed that the yard has told him that they cannot physically move Athena into his shed. She's too big. <sighs> Dang it, my entire plan was hinging on the fact that I could get Athena out of the elements. So yeah, I uh, better go scramble and see if I can figure something out. Good morning guys! It's the next day. I spent most of yesterday trying to come up with a solution to my shed problem. But I think I've found a different shed I can have Athena moved into. It's not a done deal yet, but I'm meeting with the owner later today, and I am optimistic that we'll work something out. I'm so optimistic, in fact, that when I found out yesterday afternoon, I swung by the boat and started removing a bit of the deck hardware just to celebrate. And as you can see, one of the granny bars here is missing. That granny bar is now hiding out here in the cockpit, and uh, this is that granny bar. It's hiding out here in the cockpit with a bunch of other stuff I took off the deck, mostly stuff that was secured to the tow rail. This is the stuff I removed from the deck yesterday. There's some jack lines here and a bunch of running rigging and a single cleat. I removed the granny bars in this cleat mostly just to get an idea of 
what kind of punishment I was in for to remove the rest of the stuff on the deck. And uh, sure, it'll take some time, but it's not gonna be that hard. So that's awesome. And for once, corrosion actually played to my advantage. I've come down below out of the harsh sunlight to give you guys a little bit better view of the cleat here. This cleat has been on the boat for 30 years. The cleat itself is made out of aluminum and the bolts here are stainless steel. And of course there's lots of salt water around. So over 30 years, the bolts have now become very well adhered to the cleat. In this specific case, that was actually kind of nice because that meant I could turn the nuts without anybody up on deck securing the bolt. Long story short, yay for corrosion in this very specific instance. Unfortunately, the weather forecast has changed since yesterday and they're now promising a fair bit of rain next week. So I don't wanna remove too much of the deck hardware today because uh, that just means more holes to cover up. But uh, there is something else I could do. You know, as soon as it involves a Tyvek suit, it's not gonna be super pleasant. And that is very much the case here. Because uh, last summer when I was sanding the hull, I had so much fun that I decided to leave a small little area of the hull for this summer, just so that I had something to remember all the fun by. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but here between the keel and the hull, there is a little bit of primer left. And of course I'll have to remove that. But fortunately last summer I figured out that these things are really great for getting into that area. For anyone playing along at home, this is a close-up of one of those discs. And I believe someone mentioned last summer that these are commonly used in the automotive industry. But like I said, they're great for getting into that tight corner. Well, there's nothing to it but to do it. I know a lot of you guys are probably insanely jealous of all the fun I'm gonna have here, but uh, yeah, you'll just have to control that jealousy. And that is the last of that. Ah. Fortunately, the sanding fun doesn't stop there because there are a few other spots I also need to sand. Yay! For instance, here between the skeg and the hull, but it's just a tiny little area. Ta-da! All the old primer is gone. At some point, I'll have to drop the rudder for me to be able to access the back of the skeg but I've never tried doing that before. So for that, I think I'll see if I can convince one of my friends who's a shipwright to lend a hand. I still need to stand underneath this um, rubber here and also underneath the dyna plate. Now this is gonna be fairly easy to remove. I have no idea how easy the dyna plate is going to be to remove. Huh, what the heck is this? There's some kind of powder up there. That is very funny. Hmm. This is such a lovely flat surface. It seems a shame to waste one of these discs on that because they are a little bit expensive, but that's okay because then happen wir anderen Methoden. That is so much better. Things are moving along nicely and I've just gotten a bit of awesome news, but I'll share that with you guys a little later on. Now all I need to do is to sand underneath this piece of sink here, underneath the dyna plate and the keel, and then I'll be all done. But I think removing this piece of sink might be a little bit of a challenge, so why don't I give that a go? These nuts seem to be rusted on there as something fierce. So I've removed the nuts inside of the boat and now I'm just trying to remove the entire thing. Ah, this is stuck in there, something fierce, but I figured if I just cut it up here and then take a hammer to this, I can probably push it out the other way. So out comes the angle grinder, the Swiss army knife of boat repairs. And now for a bit of precision work. Ta-da! I might as well go ahead and get that area sanded now. One area less to worry about. 
Dang nabbit, while I was crawling around inside the boat to loosen the nuts on the Dyna plate, I must accidentally have bumped my transmitter from my wireless lavalier mic and switched off the mic. So I've just spent a lot of time recording some footage without any kind of audio on it. Well, long story short, this came out with a tiny bit of brute force and a crowbar, and now all that's left to do is a bit of sanding. Ta-da! And that means the last area I need to sand now is underneath the keel, and then I'm done. And that is the very last bit of sanding I plan on doing this weekend. Of course, once I've removed the teak deck and fared the deck, and also when I've fared the hull, I have the sneaking suspicion that I might have to do a little bit more sanding. Before I head back to Obelix and call it a day, there's the small matter of that awesome news I mentioned. And that news has to do with this. Yes, this is just a key. It's not the key that's awesome, it's what it unlocks. Which is this freaking awesome place. This is where Athena and I will be spending our summer. And this is the shed scene from the other end. Look at this. I don't think I could ask for a better place to work on Athena during the summer. This is Perfect. Tomorrow the yard is gonna see if they can move me in here and I am really crossing my fingers that they can because like I said this place is perfect. There's just one tiny issue and that's the fact that the sheds are made out of black metal siding. There's no kind of insulation or anything like that so this place is gonna get hot as all heck during the summer but that's a small price to pay for hopefully getting Athena back in the water this fall. I'm gonna call it quits for today, but uh, I'll see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning, guys. It's the next day. When I spoke to the yard yesterday, they told me they'd attempt to move Athena around 10 o'clock this morning. That's about an hour from now. I was awfully tempted to get up super early this morning and start tearing at deck hardware, but I figured I'd better hold off until I'm actually inside the shed. I'm going to spend the next hour just tidying up the boat a bit because when they move the boat it does shake it a fair bit and I don't want anything important to topple over and break. So for instance the tools I've got here and all of this clutter, I'll have to tidy that up but uh, I won't bore you with that. I'm done securing everything down below so Athena should now be ready to be moved. While I wait for the yard to get ready, why don't I give you guys a quick peek at the teak deck I'm going to be removing. I have a bit of a knack for underestimating how much time I'm going to spend doing something, but this teak deck I honestly think I can remove in a weekend. And that's because it's not really glued down, although an adhesive was used, it's kind of a bad choice of adhesive. But uh, let me show you. Back in 87, when this teak deck was put on the boat, they both glued and screwed the teak deck in place, but the adhesive they used was this stuff. And I was talking to a shipwright friend of mine who said that this might be a phenolic adhesive, and as you can see, it's super brittle. When you think about all the movement in the deck, using something like this seems like, well, Maybe not the best idea. Oh, it is getting warm outside. We're supposed to hit 29 degrees Celsius or 85 Fahrenheit today, which for me is crazy hot and a little bit uncomfortable. But let's get back to the teak deck before I start melting. This adhesive is kind of a blessing and a curse because one of the reasons I'm removing the teak deck is because none of it is adhered to the hull anymore. 
But then on the other hand, it's going to be a lot easier to remove this stuff than if they'd used something like Sikaflex. So, a blessing and a curse. Of course, there is the small matter of the thousand or so screws that penetrates the teak and go into the sandwich construction. I'll have to remove those, but I don't think they're going to pose much of a challenge. Sure, it's going to take some time, but it's not going to be difficult to do. At least that's my working theory, but like I said, I have been known to be slightly optimistic about how much time I'm going to spend on something. So yeah, I guess we'll find out next weekend. Well, it took a lot longer than I had expected. In fact, we weren't done moving Athena in here in the shed until one o'clock yesterday. But hey, she's finally here. The only slightly annoying thing is she sustained a bit of damage coming in here. The yard accidentally scraped the side of the hull against one of these posts here. And as you might be able to see here above me, there's a little bit of a scratch. As you can see, it's nothing major. It's just a little scratch and I'll fix that next year. And then when they were lowering Athena after having pushed her into the shed, the lift they used got caught on the keel and took off a chunk of fiberglass. Of course, the yard offered to fix the damage they had done, but I'm gonna be doing so much work anyways, I'm gonna be glassing a whole bunch of stuff. So it'll take me like 30 minutes to fix this and it'll be done and there's no need for them to go out and find a guy. Had Athena been ready to go back in the water with an extra layer of fiberglass on there, six coats of primer and a nice sparkling copper coat, I might have gotten slightly annoyed, but yeah, that damage, pfft. That's just another drop in the ocean. Why don't we head up and check if everything is okay inside the boat? Because yeah, something might have shifted while she was being moved. The owner of this shed has built this little access plateau to get aboard his boat. Now his boat has a sugar scoop, so I assume that's pretty much level with this platform here. Athena, on the other hand, well, it's a bit of a step up, but I'll figure something out. Of course, it would help a lot if I just tidied up the cockpit a bit because this is just an accident waiting to happen. But look at how awesome this place is. Tons of standing headroom and lots of space. Well, maybe except for over here. But yeah, I can certainly work with this. This is perfect. And coming down below, everything looks to be in order. It is surprisingly dark down here though, but dude, that's okay. I'm not going to be doing a lot of work down here for the next couple of months. Before I get started removing deck hardware, I want to see if I can find some power for the boat. That way I can set up my laptop to start rendering this video around one o'clock and continue working until five o'clock. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I've opened up one of the ports because it's getting a little bit toasty in here. Now electricity is metered in these sheds, so I want to be sure to grab a shot of the meter before I start working so that the owner of the shed doesn't have to pay for the electricity I consume. That wouldn't be fair. My laptop is hooked up down below and I've just thrown the footage I've gotten so far into Premiere Pro and it looks like I'm around the 18 minute mark. And I don't like to go too much about 20 minutes, so uh, I'll have to be brief. What I'll be doing for the rest of the day is, surprise, surprise, to remove deck hardware. I've taken the nuts off the bolts on this cleat and given it a few taps with a hammer from down below. So it should just pop right up now. Maybe saying pop right up is a slight exaggeration, but going by the other cleat I removed, this shouldn't be too difficult. And there we go. Wow, the bolts on these are nowhere near as corroded on the other cleat I removed. These are all loose. Huh, that's funny. If I compare this cleat to the original cleats aboard the boat, this one and its matching cleat on the port side of the boat are slightly different. So I think these might have been added later on. But yeah, I might be able to reuse this. So that's 75 bucks saved. I'll leave the chain plates in place for now because I can remove the teak deck with them in place. And for me, it's all about removing the teak deck as soon as possible so that I can get a look at the core in here. And uh, I can always remove them later on. And in case you are curious, this is for one of the water tanks. 
Oof, that's pretty moist in there. That's the, the core that's wet. Why don't I try my luck with one of these uh, vents next? Of course, I know what these are called. Dor, do, do, Dorados, Dorado. It's that word with D, I just don't know how to pronounce it. For now, let's just call them vents and get them the heck out of here. Ta-da! Well, that's not going to be a very good vent. The funny thing is, this was still leaking, so this is kind of like not having your cake and not eating it at the same time. You don't get ventilation, but you do get leaks. This inner part here is secured to the back with a few screws from underneath, so once I remove them, this should be easy to get out. Ta-da! That's one less piece of deck hardware. And there's a bit of good news here because the core here is, well, it's a tiny bit damp, but it's not super wet. And this is a foam core, by the way. My YouTube sense is tingling. It's telling me that we're right around the 21 minute mark. And I'd like to show you guys a, a sample platter of all the deck hardware I'll be removing before ending this video. So why don't we do a hatch next? And that's the last screw. Hmm, this part of the frame here is on there really, really well. I am crossing my fingers. Someone didn't use an adhesive instead of a sealer on this, because if they did use an adhesive, I might damage this part of the frame here while trying to remove it, and hatches are expensive. But seeing as I am removing the teak deck, why don't we see if this teak trim here is easier to remove, because it looks like the hatch is stuck onto that. Well, that is on there really well too. So out comes the oscillating tool. Now this may very well damage the anodization on the underside of this part of the frame here, but uh, I think that's the lesser of all the evils. So let's give this a go. Huh. Well, that has never happened before. God dang it. The crappy scraper attachment for my oscillating tool keeps falling off. I don't know if it's because it's a cheaper one from Mitsutomo, but yeah, it keeps falling off. I've managed to go all the way around except this bit up here. So now I think I'm gonna try wedging a cabinet scraper in underneath the flange here and then using a crowbar. I'm hoping this cabinet scraper here will protect the aluminum, but uh, let's see how this goes. Dang it! Of course that cabinet scraper had to fall into the messiest place aboard the boat. Yeah, that's lost to the world now. But hey, that's okay because I've got plenty of cabinet scrapers. Without a doubt, this hatch is the worst piece of deck hardware I've had to remove so far. Dang it! Well, the good news is I got the hatch off. When I said I had plenty of cabinet scrapers, what I really meant was I had three. Now I've got one. Looking at this frame, that certainly looks a lot more like an adhesive than a sealer. Oh, Jesus. Good thing there's only two hatches left. Ah, this is slightly annoying. I had hoped this was built in a different way, but uh, yeah, we'll get back to this next weekend. Because next weekend, I'm going to get started on removing the old teak deck. And I also plan on finishing that next weekend. Now, feel free to tell me what a complete optimistic fool I am down in the comments, and we'll see what happens next weekend. Okay, guys, I better get busy rendering this video right now. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this weekend. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.